Hi, everybody. How do you follow that? Wasn't that great? That's like the perfect thing for the morning. You know, it's get, get, get us into the right frame of mind. I mean, we've got this serious topic about copyright. Huh, forget it. You know, let's all do a, a big circle around the room. Nick, can you just direct us and yeah. we put it online and then we get the cafe press and then, and then we'll be sorted. Right, um, now I'm just gonna bring up my uh, more prosaic slides here on the desktop, cool. It's not rocket science, Tim. Okay, here we go. Behind that thing? Yeah. In there? Yeah. There we go. Okay. If you were a digital native, you'd have no trouble. I wouldn't, that's right. And I did it as a PDF as well. Um, <laughs> that's right, here we go. So anyway, a, a, li a little bit of background. So I'm coming, I'm coming to you, first of all, I have to state this. I am not an expert in copyright. Um, just at the beginning of this talk, I just have to read this out. Uh, I warranty to, I oh know I better not do that, so that's, that's kind of. Um, I'm not an expert in copyright, and I'm not a, uh, I'm not a lawyer, um, so you guys all know a lot more about copyright than I do. I guess what, um, what I know a little bit about is about how copyright and how the distribution business works. So I'm like the token capitalist I'm actually the evil intermediary. I'm the middleman in my sort of quick flicks guys. Um, I have another couple of guises that I'll share with you as well. Uh, I'm, as, as Beck mentioned, I'm a wannabe filmmaker, and I've also been very active in the startup community, so uh, interested in innovation. So in my Dr. Evil sort of mode, I'll mention a, a couple of pieces about quick flicks, um, just to, to, to give you some background, and perhaps counter a couple of points that were made in the last panel, which raised my heckle a little bit. Um, uh, loved a lot of what was said. Some of the things I've said, I, I think I need to sort of talk a little about. So hang on, back up. What the hell is QuickFlix? Who here knows what QuickFlix is? Okay, so I better explain what QuickFlix is. QuickFlix is an online movie and TV company. People can rent Blu-rays and DVDs from us <laughs> for one small price per month, it's a subscription model, and they can also watch stream uh, movies and TV shows to their favorite connected device. So since we launched our digital service in Christmas 2011, we built out to over 220 models of device in Australia and New Zealand. So that includes the iPhone in your hand, the iPads, the Mac and PC on web, Samsung TV, Sony, Bravia TVs and set-top boxes, we're on PlayStation 3, we're on Xbox, we're on these cool little HDMI dongles that can turn your dumb TV into a smart TV uh, and give you an electronic program guide. And in New Zealand, in a few months' time, we'll even be on Freeview because the New Zealand, uh, New Zealand uh, standard for Freeview is actually the UK standard or a similar level to the UK standard, unlike the cheap one we did here in Australia. And so you can actually download an application onto their free, Freeview boxes and their Freeview enabled TV. So we'll have a, a quick flix Freeview app that people, anybody can literally download by tuning into some channel. Uh, and then they'll be able to plug that into the internet and then stream movies and TV to their, uh, to their TV shop. So uh, if you've heard of Netflix, we're very much like the Australian version of Netflix. Uh, we do a little bit extra. Netflix doesn't do any new release. We do new release as pay-per-view in our streaming service. And of course we do lots and lots of new release um, Blu-rays and DVDs. Um, at the end of this, I'll give you a little code you can all use. And, and because I'm a member of QuickFlix, I can give you a, a free two-month trial of QuickFlix post and play. Um, so you can try the, the service for yourselves and see how you go. Okay? Um, so QuickFlix is basically about innovation in digital distribution. We believe in giving you the content that you want wherever you want on whatever device you want. And uh, we're like a very old startup. Um, we started in 2005, public listed company. We're still working it out. We're still struggling to make our business profitable, although I think we're going to get there this year. We've had lots of twists and turns in our journey, and I think our twists and turns and, and the ups and downs that we've experienced mirror very much the internal challenges going on in the, in the movie studios themselves, in the distributors around the world, and in their relationship with the consumer. Now, I want to, I, I think I want to counter one cultural meme that perhaps, you know, is, is around, which is that 
we, the poor little consumers, are being told what to do by these nasty big Hollywood studios um, who make lots of money and don't care about us. And it couldn't be anything further than the truth. These people are digital natives too. They have children, they have nephews, they have nieces, they're sitting there doing their business with iPads. And actually what they're trying to work out is how to transition from the old physical model to the new digital model and still be able to pay the crew, still be able to stay in business. Um, people look at the profits of some of these companies and say they make millions of, and billions of dollars a year. Well, they make, maybe they make a billion dollars a year every now and then on very large revenues. If they make a mistake, they can go from a billion dollars in profit per year to two billion dollars in loss, just like that. So I think we, we also need to say that actually the time we're in is complicated for everybody. Um, and filmmakers and film producers and distributors, they create jobs, they pay salaries, they pay rent. Um, they are trying to give us, the consumers, what we want, and it takes time. Now we're impatient and we want it now as David so beautifully put. We wanted it yesterday. We wanted it 10 years ago. We wanted to watch whatever we want, wherever we want. Um, the, what I found out as a, as a, perhaps I used to think I was a digital native until I met Nick, but anyway, as a digital immigrant, as Steve put it, um, what I think is, is that it, it's gonna just take longer than we want and uh, it's a more complicated process than we think. Um, but I'll, we are doing things like, for example, putting all of the Sopranos episodes from all seasons of the show online for you to get in bed with your iPad and watch and, and or burn or spend the whole weekend just rugged up in the Canberra weather or Sydney weather lately um, and just burn through it. it because that's what people want and we want to give that to you and hey the Hollywood studios and I would add people like the BBC people like Canal Plus and many other major film content owners in countries other than the USA um, impose upon us. They actually do want to experiment with these kinds of models and see what the reaction is. Um, I'll just mention briefly also about geo-targeting in the true spirit of, of uh, mooting or debating in a legal sense. Uh, don't lynch me. There is one benefit to geo-targeting. If you look at the book industry, would you do a startup right now that was going to sell books? Would you really invest in someone who said, I want to sell books online? Would you do that? No, because Amazon has cornered that market entirely. In fact, they've cornered it against their own value system almost, yeah, because they're actually really cool guys. But you wouldn't do a startup in books anymore because Amazon owns it. So in one sense, although geo-targeting is bloody annoying from the point of view of a consumer, why can't I get uh, Flight of the Concords in New Zealand on QuickFlix? Well, because Sky has an exclusive with HBO and so we can't give you Flight of the Concords in, in New Zealand. Flip side is, we don't have Netflix dominating the entire planet doing over-the-top distribution. We as QuickFlix can exist. Love Film in the UK can exist. Companies like Vimon in, Nor in Norway has a very you know, active set of customers throughout Scandinavia for their streaming platform because Netflix has to respect the geo-targeting and licensing agreements that the studios have. So there is a flip side to a lot of these existing business cases which, are, which need to be considered here. Yeah? I, think, I think the argument I'm making is that, uh, very much like a recent Guardian article, um, perhaps we need to be modelling our economies less in an industrial model and more in a biological ecosystem model where we have perhaps a lot of maybe significant species in this ecosystem, but we also have a lot, a very rich, incredibly rich layer of other types of enterprise that contribute to the resilience economically of the whole. You know, maybe if we had that kind of economical model, we wouldn't have had the GFC, where a whole series of very, just a few very large organizations made massive missteps, missteps and everything fell apart. So I think, I think that's probably where we're moving towards, a place where Nick, can monetize his great ideas and a place where we can also invest in major productions that we'll love from the BBC, from Hollywood and others. Now the other two personas I have here in, in, in terms of the copyright debate and innovation, this is a photo of me as a filmmaker. You get the, the cravat, obviously very old fashioned. I should have headphones and tats. 
Um, but as a filmmaker or a producer, I want to choose which model I'm going to use to monetize my content. If I want to put it on BitTorrent and super distribute it to get myself a name, get myself an audience, or in, in this case YouTube, and then Cafe Press it, I want that right. And if it goes well and I want to license it to the ABC or license it to uh, the comedy channel in the US, I want that right too. So I would like all of those options and those options will help me pay my crew uh, or you know, my exorbitantly priced two bedroom apartment in Bondi, which I don't yet have. But anyway, um, I'm also thinking about my kids and, and, and I'm also thinking about the entrepreneurial community in Australia, which is trying to skill up now in terms of how it uses capital IP. And maybe we need to think about some fair use rights here where I'm not gonna come after you if you're just testing out a model. I'm not gonna come after you if you're messing around with stuff and just trying to see what works. I'm not gonna come out after you for putting in, you know, my character's face on your T-shirt. Maybe we need a model there where it's kind of tiered in some way. Um, anyway, that's, that's sort of my take on the innovation. Hopefully that helps spark some ideas. Um, here's the code. Uh, gift from me. Just go to quickflix.com.au slash mygift and, um, and try a surface and see what you think. <laughs>